Alrighty guys, it is Quaman here today and I'm bringing you another episode of Dragon Ball Z Thought for Talk Episode 8. And in today's video, Black and Fist and I will be talking strictly about Piccolo and how strong we thought he was at the end of Dragon Ball Z. Now, when we're talking about the end of Dragon Ball Z, we're not exactly talking about when Goku took Oob to train. We're talking specifically right after the defeat of Majin Buu, how strong was Piccolo? So without wasting any more time, Black and Fist, tell the viewers how strong you thought Piccolo was. Well, if we're talking about by the end of the Buu saga, I would say that uh, Piccolo, I think, obviously the strongest guys would have been Goku, Gohan, whichever one, is, that's a debate on its own. But it's definitely those two up. Then Vegeta after them two. And then uh, you could say guys like Majin Buu after that. Or I guess that I guess that debate's not relevant here. But there's Majin Buu st obviously stronger than Piccolo. And then from there, I think after those four guys, really, at, at, the, at, at the main cast, maybe you can find other guys that are stronger than Piccolo, but at least in the main, like, Z fighter cast, you could say, I'd say that Piccolo is probably the strongest guy after those four. I would say he's stronger than, obviously, all the humans, obviously, and uh, number 18, and even Kid, Go uh, Kid Goten and Trunks. Hmm. Well... I actually think, well, based off of what I thought about in the series, I definitely think Piccolo was stronger than second form Cell in about the end of Dragon Ball Z, including the, specifically talking about the Buu Saga, and my reasoning was based off of what happened in both the manga and the anime. Now, let me just say that Piccolo's strength is determined by two main factors. If we're going by Piccolo from the anime, I can make an argument that he's stronger than Perfect Cell by the end of the Boo Saga. If we're going by the anime, now there is some inconsistencies, but here are my main points. The reason why I say that Piccolo was would have been stronger than Perfect Cell based off of the anime would have been his fight against the Cell Juniors. Now, Piccolo, seven years prior was able to hold his own against the Cell Juniors, and in some cases, he looked relatively competitive against them. And because of that, that heavily implies that Piccolo, it, with seven years of additional training, and you know how much training you can get in seven years, I mean, considering the fact that from, you know, the beginning of the Android threat to the actual Android fight, Piccolo powered up significantly stronger without even fusing with Kami, Seven years is significant to, I would say, at least catch up to the first Perfect Cell. I wouldn't say he's stronger than Super Perfect Cell, but I would definitely say that he would be stronger than Perfect Cell by the end of the Boo Saga. Now, there isn't a lot of evidence specifically to support this, which is why I think this argument's a bit ambiguous. But there is one clue that highlights all of this, Black and Fist, and the clue is Supreme Kai. Now, at the World Martial Arts Tournament, Piccolo was going up against the Supreme Kai when they were trying to fight. And the reason why you can make an argument that he would be weaker than Super Perfect Cell was because when he found Supreme Kai, he was so mesmerized by his power that he actually forfeited the fight. Now, my thing is that Supreme Kai, when he saw Gohan transform into a Super Saiyan 2, a, a Super Saiyan 2 who was much weaker than Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan, he was so mesmerized by his power and he was talking about how strong he thought Vegeta, Trunks, and Goku were. So because of Supreme Kai's overexcitement for Gohan's weaker Super Saiyan 2 power, I would definitely say Piccolo was definitely weaker than... Super Saiyan 2 adult Gohan and it may have been implied that he may have even have been weaker than Supreme Kai himself, but that is ambiguous and it can go either way But it is said in certain sources that Supreme Kai was a thousand times stronger than Frieza But at this point who's not stronger than Frieza? Exactly. So well 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 Fukatsu no F. Yes, but, you know, let's <laughs> Well, yeah, that's another argument. So essentially I think by the Buu saga I think Piccolo was stronger than regular Perfect Cell, but definitely not Super Perfect Cell. Now, one thing that I wanted to say is there are going to be a lot of people who aren't fans of Dragon Ball GT. And I completely understand that. But, 
Black and Fist, I'm sure that we can definitely agree that if Piccolo continued to train, and he seems like he's the character who does, I'm trying not to be biased, we can definitely agree that with 10 years, and considering Piccolo is not that old in comparison to Gohan, with 10 years, Piccolo would have definitely have been stronger than Super Perfect Cell. He would at least be a Super Saiyan 2. Would you agree with that? Well, I'll, I'll say this. Although I don't completely buy your thing about Piccolo being uh, stronger than a Super Perfect Cell uh, in Z, I will buy that with the combined time of all of Z, and even even if you don't go deep into GT, even if you just take the beginning of GT, which was uh, a 10-year gap, I, at least in the Funimation dub, I believe, because I think the gaps were actually, I believe the gap of right. GT is actually different in the Japanese. Yeah, it's, it's five least, years in the Japanese, 10 years in the American. Well, even regardless of that, I still think that by GT's time, I definitely could see a Piccolo that is stronger uh, that is stronger than a super perfect cell easily right. easily if he was training this whole time of course easily definitely and you know black and fist to, to just reiterate a little bit when i was talking about the boo saga i i think that he would he was stronger than than per perfect cell by the end of the boo saga but i definitely think you know when you're combining all that time and fukatsu no F, who knows maybe that even you know that might even sway our opinion even more after we watched the movie as to how strong piccolo was but there was a moment in dragon ball gt when you know there was a villain i forgot who it was at the moment but i'll probably show a clip of it he was talking about he was talking to trunks and you know he was talking about how strong he thought trunks was and trunks said oh well there are other guys who you know would have something to say about that like my dad goku and piccolo which implies that piccolo was probably stronger than trunks in gt which would probably be obvious well, 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 well. Considering the fact that the GT Trunks doesn't seem too concerned about uh, fighting and training, I'm not saying I'm not saying GT Trunks was completely slacking off because I'm pretty sure he trained. I'm just saying that it wasn't his life. Like I'm pretty sure it would have been for Piccolo, you know. However, Black and Fist, there is one inconsistency with Dragon Ball GT that I do have to point out. There was a scene when Baby Gohan was possessed. And he shot a Kamehameha at Piccolo, and it actually, like, caused Piccolo to evaporate. It's implied that Piccolo actually survived and did absolutely nothing later because this, because GT completely wrote him off, which really pissed me off. But that would imply that Piccolo was... What can you do? It's Goku time. <laughs> but they that would imply that GT Piccolo would be weaker than Gohan. So there's a lot of inconsistencies that Gohan's power declined that much to the point where he would have been weaker than Super Perfect Cell we don't know for sure but I am definitely 100% sure that because of the fact that baby Goten did some damage on him maybe baby Goten was a lot stronger than what we thought but at the end of the day I definitely think with everything being consistent I definitely think by the end of the Buu saga Piccolo was stronger than regular Perfect Cell I'm free to debate with anybody because this is all ambiguous in opinion, and I think by Battle of Gods, hmm, well let me get to Battle of Gods in a second, by the end of Z I definitely think he was close to, I would, I would definitely think he was stronger than Super Perfect Cell by the end of Z, in GT he's definitely stronger than Super Perfect Cell and maybe even Fat Boo by the end of GT, but when we're talking about Battle of Gods, Black and Fist, because somebody's going to want us to be specific, how strong would you say Piccolo was by Battle of Gods four years after the end of Z? Um, honestly, I, I really don't think that... I mean, obviously he would have gotten stronger, but I don't think that he would have been able to surpass Goku, obviously, Vegeta, or even Gohan by Battle of Gods, honestly. So, I mean... So I, even though he was definitely stronger in terms of just his like the hierarchy, you could say, it pretty much didn't change much or at all really since the the ending of the Buu saga. Because because you know the the guys that are stronger than him like Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, they're like so so much stronger than him at this point. Um, so you know the only guy he eventually could theoretically could catch up to. Of in like a couple of years, and I mean years of training was m maybe Gohan because he doesn't train at all and he's always getting weaker. But the other two, you know, obviously Vegeta and Goku are always getting stronger. So, 
Well, I guess I'll make one more point that I was uh, bringing up earlier about the manga. Because of uh, the way the manga was written, it's heavily implied that Piccolo would have been a lot weaker. And the reason I say this is because of the fact that in the manga, Piccolo's fight with the Cell Juniors was different. The anime made him look a lot stronger against the Cell Juniors than the manga did. Which would support that Piccolo wasn't, you know, strong, strong enough. And also based off of the anime and the Kamehameha Clash, it, I, I guess you could call this filler, but you notice that the Z Fighters were all blown away at different points. Like Yamcha was blown away first, and then Piccolo was actually blown away last, if that means anything. And he managed to hold some, hold up a little bit against uh, Super Perfect Cell when he electrocuted him with his energy. That didn't happen in the manga, so that would definitely imply that Piccolo would have been a lot weaker in the manga than he was in the anime. But I do think that with four, I'm sorry, with seven years of training, he would be at least close to perfect cell. And I definitely think, I mean, obviously, if we're going by the manga, there is no GT. So by the end of Z, including by the end where Goku takes Luke to train, I definitely think Piccolo was stronger than perfect cell and maybe somewhat close to super perfect cell which would put him at around maybe a super saiyan 2 ish but this is all based on the assumption that if he trained if piccolo didn't train then he would just be declining and i'm sure we would both agree to that black and fist do you have any opinion on that in terms of manga strength <clears throat> no i think you pretty much covered it all pretty good Alright, so guys, I finally had a topic strictly just talking about Piccolo. I really appreciate it, and I really like Black and Fist's feedback. I hope you guys enjoyed our Thought for Talk episode 8. Remember, in our Thought for Talk series, we're talking about things that don't necessarily have a defined answer. It's just purely opinion based off of evidence we've seen in the manga and the anime. And I hope you guys enjoy. So please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember, as I always say, to have a great day, guys. And remember that Piccolo is the best character in Dragon Ball Z. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, it is Quaman here today, and I'm bringing you another episode of Dragon Ball Z Thought for Talk Episode 8, and this one is strictly talking about how... Oh, damn, I burped. <laughs> oh, well. Go again. Hello, everybody, it's Quaman here today, and I'm telling you guys right now that I had to re-upload this video because YouTube gave me a strike on this video and they didn't allow me to appeal it. So, I'm re-uploading this video in the new format, and essentially, guys, I wanted to point out something really interesting that Black and Fist and I didn't, you know, point out in this video when we made this video months ago, is that when Piccolo went into the hyperbolic time chamber, he was actually stronger than Vegeta and Trunks when they went in. I'm not saying he was stronger than them when they came out, but that is enough to tell you that Piccolo could have been closer to semi-perfect cell than you think, considering he was already considerably stronger than Vegeta and Trunks prior to going into the hyperbolic time chamber. So it, he wouldn't have required as much when he came out, even though I still think he would have obviously have been weaker than Vegeta and Trunks. And I felt that this is a pretty interesting point for you guys to know. Thank you.